The origin of Lucifer, the devil or Satan. In Christianity, the devil is the personification of evil and the originator of sin, who rebelled against God in an attempt to become as powerful as God. He is described as a fallen angel who was driven from heaven before God created the material world, and who is constantly in rebellion to God. The serpent in the Garden of Eden, Lucifer, Satan, the tempter of the Gospels, Leviathan, and the dragon in the book of Revelation are all figures associated with the devil in the Bible. The role of the devil was debated by early thinkers. Scholars influenced by Neoplatonic cosmology, like as Origen and Pseudo-Dionysius, saw the devil as a symbol of inadequacy and emptiness, the most distant entity from the divine. The devil's world, according to Augustine of Hippo, is not emptiness, but a lower realm that stands in opposition to God. Gregory the Great established the traditional medieval portrayal of the devil. He included the devil, as God's first creation, in the Christian angelic hierarchy as the highest of the angels, either a cherub or a seraph, who fell far into hell and became the demon's commander. The role of Lucifer in the creation. Since the early Reformation, the devil has been portrayed as a more powerful entity, possessing not just a lack of righteousness but also a conscious desire to destroy God, his message, and his creation. Simultaneously, other reformers viewed the devil as only a metaphor for man's proclivity to sin, reducing the demon's role. While most scholars believe the devil played no significant influence in the modern era, he has resurfaced in contemporary Christianity. Some people, such as the Cathars and the Bogomiles, as well as theologians like Marcion and Valentinus, thought that the devil was engaged in the creation of the universe at various times throughout history. These viewpoints are no longer held by the majority of Christians. Lucifer the adversary, the Hebrew term for which Satan is derived was originally a common noun that meant accuser or adversary and may be applied to both human and divine foes. The word obstruct comes from a verb that means to resist, obstruct. Throughout the Hebrew Bible, regular human foes are constantly mentioned. However, the same term is used to refer to the Lord's angel in 1 Samuel 29 verse 4, 2 Samuel 19 verse 22, 1 Kings 5 verse 4, 1 Kings 11 verses 14 and 23, 25, Psalms 109 verse 6, and Numbers 22, 32. In Job 1-2 and Zechariah 3, this concept of a heavenly being as an opponent to people grew into the personified evil of a creature with agency, referred to as the Satan 18 times. Both Hebrew and Greek include definite articles that distinguish between common and proper nouns, but they are utilized in opposite ways. The article in Hebrew denotes a common noun, whereas the article in Greek designates an individual's name, a proper noun. In the Hebrew book of Job, for example, one of the angels is referred to as a Satan, an adversary, but in the Greek Septuagint, which was used by the early Christians, whenever the Satan, Ha Satan, appears with a definite article, it refers to the individual known as the heavenly accuser whose personal name is Satan. In some circumstances, it's difficult to tell which is meant. According to Henry A. Kelly, Nearly all modern translators and interpreters agree that 1 Chronicles 21 verse 1 contains the proper name of a distinct being designated to the function of adversary, where Satan appears without the definite article. According to Thomas Farrar, in all three cases, devil was rendered as Diabolos in the Septuagint, and in Job and Zechariah, as Ho Diabolos, the accuser, the slanderer. The referent of the term Satan in all three of these verses is generally agreed upon by Old Testament scholars to be a heavenly entity. Lucifer, the evil one. Satan is never alluded to as the evil one, the enemy, Belial, Mastima, or Beelzebul, in early rabbinic literature. No Talmudic source describes Satan as a devil or a fallen angel, nor does it anticipate his demise. Satan is depicted in ancient Jewish texts as a god's agent, a spy, a stool pigeon, a prosecutor of mankind, and even a hangman. He comes down to earth to test men's virtue and lead them astray, then ascends to heaven to accuse them. Job is a righteous man who is favored by God in the book of Job. The sons of God, being H. Lim, presenting themselves before God is described in Job 1 verses 6 to 8. Sons of God describes angels as superhuman celestial beings, ministers of Yahweh, 
able to act in the affairs of men under his guidance, and having a closer unity with Yahweh than men. They can be found in both the early and later books of the Old Testament. They exist in prophetic and sapiential literature as well as historical writings, they appear in ancient history as well as modern history. They mainly appear in the Old Testament as God's agents to men, otherwise, they appear as Yahweh's celestial court. They are sent to men to deliver God's message, to destroy, to save, to assist, and to punish. The angels are completely obedient to God's will. When they appear among men, it is to carry out Yahweh's desire. Lucifer, the ruler of the world. God inquires of one of them as to where he has been. Satan responds that he has been around the globe. Have you considered my servant Job? God inquires. Satan believes Job only loves God because he has been blessed, so he asks God to put Job's love for God to the test by putting him through hardship, anticipating Job to renounce his faith. Job's family, health, servants, and flocks are all destroyed by Satan, but Job refuses to criticize God. In the end, God gave Job back twice as much as he had lost. They are sent to men to deliver God's message, to destroy, to save, to assist, and to punish. The angels are completely obedient to God's will. This is one of two Old Testament passages, along with Zechariah 3, in which the Hebrew Hasatan, the adversary, is rendered in the Greek Septuagint as Hodiabolos, the slanderer. In King David's census, a Satan is involved, and Christian doctrines regarding him vary, just as the pre-exilic narrative of 2 Samuel and the later story of 1 Chronicles give contrasting perspectives. And the Lord's wrath against Israel was reawakened, and he roused David against them, telling him, Go, number Israel and Judah. 2 Samuel 24 verses 1-2 However, Satan rose out against Israel, and David was assigned the task of counting Israel. 1 Chronicles 21 verses 1-2 Some schools of thought claim that this phrase relates to a human entity known as devil, while others say that it actually refers to a celestial supernatural agent known as an angel. Because the Satan is sent by God's will, his role is less like that of God's demonic foe. Even if it is assumed that this Satan refers to a supernatural agent, this does not mean that it is the Satan. Most commentators and interpreters agree that David Satan is to be linked with Satan and the devil, because the figure's role is identical to that of the devil, namely, leading David into wrongdoing. A disagreement between Satan and the angel of the Lord is depicted in Zechariah's vision of recently deceased Joshua the high priest in the celestial throne room, Zechariah 3 verses 1-2. The scene depicts Joshua the high priest, clad in filthy rags, standing trial with God as the judge and Satan as the prosecutor, representing the nation of Judah and its misdeeds. Yahweh chastises Satan and commands that Joshua be clothed in new garments, symbolizing God's forgiveness of Judah's sins. The vision, according to Gulder in 1998, is linked to Sambalat the Horonite's opposition. Satan works in conformity with God's will once more. According to the scripture, he is both God's accuser and his executioner.